What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 59 of Unshake. We're going to be doing something fun today, or at least fun for me. Uh, we're going to be making a donut box that is designed with parametric variables and using the sheet metal function on Onshape. So this is kind of introducing a problem here. It's like, let's say if I was an engineering, uh, or I was an engineer and had an engineering client who wanted to have three different size donut boxes, uh, how would I use my time most effectively using this, this method? And so parametric constraints will allow us to design one box that is defined by variables and not by static values, like the number three is a static value. But if we define something by like height or width or depth, we can then change those values and the box will automatically change how we need. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make the donut. Donut's gonna be a static value. It's going to be something a particular size. And then we're gonna start building our box. So this is probably gonna take a couple of videos to get all the way through it. I am gonna explain everything. So if you feel like you can make a donut on your own, Cool, you can skip on ahead. But like everything else we've done, we are going to start from nothing. So let's create a part studio here. And let's make our donut. So I'm gonna start a sketch on any plane really. Hit view normal too. And a donut has a diameter uh, total of about three inches, at least that's what Google says. And then it also has a thickness of about uh, an inch and a quarter. So let's do that. Actually, no, let's make an inch and a half. And then our distance here is also going to be an inch and a half. Because that way we want to use the revolve feature here in a moment is that the, the donut overall is going to be kind of this size I want it to be. You can make it the donut however big you want or however small you want. Um, but we should be good here to go. We're going to right click on this line and make it a construction line because we're only going to reference it. We're not going to use it. I'm going to hit the green check mark and let's get going. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back in here real quick and I'm going to draw a line across. And we'll see why here in a second. Is that I want to make the Homer Simpson donut. As I want the donut to be pink on top and brown on bottom. So in order to do that, we need two different parts. We're going to click on Revolve. We're gonna do this top portion right here. The revolve axis is gonna be this center right here that we've drawn, hit the green check mark. We can then call this part donut top. So donut top. Oh, if I can spell today, there we go. And then we're gonna to need to make sketch one active again. We're gonna hit revolve, do this bottom portion around this center axis. And instead of add, it's gonna be a new, because I want these to be two different parts. Right click, rename, and let's call this donut bottom. Okay, like the classic Homer Simpson donut, we need to edit that appearance and make it a pinkish color. So I'm gonna go to the mixer, find something pinkish, find a hue that matches it the best I can. And there we go, we've got the top of our donut. We're going to flip on down to the bottom side now, right click, we're going to edit that appearance and choose, I would say that looks best like a donut. Hit the green check mark and now we've got our standard donut size. So if I was an engineer for an engineering client, the, their donuts are going to be a standard size. So we're going to base our box off of this donut. All right, now let's move on to the box. So let's create another part studio. Let's rename this first one. Let's just call that Donut for the video. And then let's rename this part Studio. Let's call it the Box for Video. Now I'm not accidentally referencing something from that, the one I already made. Okay, next thing we've got going on here is we're going to sketch. Actually, before we can get into our sketches, we're going to create our three variables. So up here on this uh, middle on the top-ish, if you have a small window, you might need to click the drop-down. We're going to click on variable, <clears throat> and our first variable is going to be height. And we're going to give it a value of, let's just say, 6 inches. Hit the green check mark, and we're looking good. We're going to click on variable again one more time, and then we're going to do, let's do width. 
and let's give it a value of six inches as well. And the last variable, I think I clicked exit on that, let's try that again. Width, six inches, there we go. And the last one's going to be depth. And I'll give that six inches. All right, because I want my variables to line up with my box, we're going to make our sketch of our box on this front plane right here. And we'll see why here in a moment, is that I'm going to draw a rectangle. And then when I hit dimension, I want this dimension to be the height of my box. So I'm just going to type in height. And it'll automatically put in that value of six. Now for our other value, which is going to be this bottom right here, this is going to be our width. And it's going to put in the value of six as well. I'm going to hit the green check mark now. We're going to extrude this piece back. And you see how I, I chose that front plane to do my sketch on? That way my depth here is going to be defined by depth. You can go either direction, doesn't matter. And there we go. We now officially have our box. One thing I really, really, really like is that we can just double click in here. We can change our height. I'll see if we want a three inch box instead. And we've just now sped up our process. So now hopefully you can see the scope of using parametric constraints. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is we need to use the sheet metal function. However, what I'm going to do is so let's see what time we got. Oh, we got seven minutes. Let's go ahead and make the bottom and then we'll make the top later. Okay, so I'm going to click on sketch. Actually, oh, let's go here. We're going to click on this sheet metal model. When I click on the sheet metal model, a bunch of uh, different options occur. Here's what you have to realize when you talk about sheet metal. The sheet metal function is going to take some 3D geometry and say, we're going to make this shape using sheet metal, not the shape itself. So it's not like a, I'm going to have a sheet metal cube. It's a, you have a cube right now. How could we wrap sheet metal around it to make that cube a surface? So when I click on this part, it now envelops the whole thing in a sheet metal cube. However, we have faces we need to exclude and edges that need to be bent versus edges that have been cut. So if I take this, click on this top piece now, we can see that we have the bottom of our donut box and we need to think about how is this box going to fold in order to uh, be able to be manufactured. And I think the easiest one would then be is that the, the edges that are going to be bent are the ones on the bottom. I can't think of a single donut box that I know of that is going to be uh, the edges on the bottom are cut. I think they're all typically folded. Okay, did I get them all? We got one, two, three, and four. Okay, let's go back to my view cube because I'm all kinds of tangled up here. We got the front right top. And then for relief, I really, really just like the simple closed relief. Actually, no, let's close. There we go. And that just makes the box look the nicest. Um, when you're dealing with sheet metal, depending on how it's folded and how it's bent, uh, you need clearance and things like that. We're not getting into that. I just like the simple closed look uh, just because it looks nice and neat. Hit the green check mark, and there we go. We've officially made the bottom of our box. However, I'm going to right click. Or let's rename this and let's call this box bottom. Okay. And there we go, folks. Let's go ahead and call it done for the video here. Um, and that way we're not making this video too long. We'll come back and finish the top half and uh, look at some interesting stuff when it comes to the drawing files of this sheet metal box. You guys are awesome. Stick around and uh, I'll show you the next video will drop in here soon. If this video has been helpful, please like and subscribe. It has been wonderfully awesome to see you guys watching these videos. Uh, I'm excited for what's in store. Take care, and I'll see you guys on the next video.